Richard Dawkins is the undisputed high priest of modern evolution thought. He is also revered by the atheist community since he often goes to great lengths to deny the existence of God, any God, and often he particularly and singularly mocks Christianity and the creator God of the Bible. This brief film will examine some amazing and revealing statements about evolution and intelligent design, statements made by Dr. Richard Dawkins himself. But more than that, this film will examine Dr. Dawkins' responses once his shocking statements went public on film and were made available, embarrassingly, to the world. Note that in every single example of Dawkins' statements, his claim is that he was duped and fooled. It seems that Dr. Dawkins is a very gullible person, very easy to fool. I wonder if such a gullible person should really be the messiah of modern evolutionary thought. We also wonder if Dawkins is so easily duped and fooled, could it be that he has been duped and fooled by the very theory that he so vehemently espouses to be true? It certainly seems to be a likely possibility. In Ben Stein's shocking expose movie entitled Expelled, there is a segment in which Richard Dawkins is interviewed. Listen to his answer when Ben Stein asks him how life originated. Well, how did it start? Nobody knows how, how it got started. We know the kind of event that it must have been. We know the sort of event that, that must have happened for the origin of life. What was that? It was the origin of the first self-replicating molecule. Right. How did that happen? I told you, we don't know. So you have no idea how it started? No, no. no, no nor has anybody. Nor has anyone else. So for all the bloviating and fulminating evolutionists who claim that you know how life originated and that you understand the processes behind it all and that anyone who dares to question the theory of evolution is ignorant, well, you are wrong. According to Dawkins himself, nobody knows how it got started. And if it is so that nobody knows how it got started, why do you insist that evolution be taught as fact to the exclusion of every other idea, especially intelligent design. In fact, listen to what your own high priest says regarding the possibility of an intelligent designer. What do you think is the possibility that, there, that intelligent design might turn out to be uh, the answer to some issues in uh, genetics or in, well, in evolution? It could come about in the following way. It could be that uh, at some earlier time, somewhere in the universe, a civilization evolved by probably some kind of Darwinian means to a very, very high level of technology and designed a form of life that they seeded onto perhaps this, this planet. Um, now, th that is a possibility and an intriguing possibility. Mm -hmm. And I suppose it's possible that you might find evidence for that if you look at the, um, at the detail, details of biochemistry, molecular biology, you might find a signature of some sort of designer. Because of the complexity of the chemistry of molecular biology, you might find the signature of some sort of designer. Thank you, Dr. Dawkins. You just said what intelligent design proponents have been saying from the beginning. You object when we say it, yet you get to say it, and it is somehow magically scientific. How hypocritical. How disingenuous. Listen to what Dr. Dawkins says next about that higher intelligence. Um, and that designer could well be a higher intelligence from elsewhere in the universe. Well, but that uh, higher intelligence would itself have had to have come about by some explicable or ultimately explicable process. It couldn't have just jumped into existence spontaneously. That's the point. So the higher intelligence itself couldn't have just jumped into existence spontaneously. That was your point? Wow. Yet, as you deny the existence of God with all of your might, you insist that everything we now see before us, over two million species of life, and as far as we know, only on our planet, it all started by something jumping into existence spontaneously. This is what evolution theory proposes. So the first life on Earth came about from non-life spontaneously, that is, as you say, solid truth, and it must be taught as fact. But a higher intelligence couldn't have done anything like that. Dr. Dawkins, we are beginning to smell the rat of rank hypocrisy and delusion. 
Listen now as Dr. Dawkins tries to explain himself to a very friendly audience. Obviously, he is embarrassed by his statements in the movie Expelled. You will not believe what you will hear next as his explanation. Uh, I, at that time, had never heard of Ben Stein, and I was... Um, I had been duped uh, by a man called Mathis into taking part in a film which I thought was a serious um, exploration of science and religion, that's what I was told. Uh, I only much later discovered that it was a creationist front uh, and that I had been fooled into doing something that I would never normally have done. When I spoke to Ben Stein, I took him seriously. I thought he was, well, until the end of that interview, as you saw. Um, I've, and when he asked me that question, um, something like, could you ever imagine any kind of intelligent design? I bent over backwards to try to give intelligent design its best shot. Once again, I was uh, bending over backwards, and once again, it was a case of quote mining. The important point is that anything that could have the attributes of, of an intelligence, including gods, could not just happen, they would have to have come about by a gradual, incremental process. Anything that would have the attributes of intelligence could not have just happened. They would have to come about by gradual, incremental processes. It seems Dr. Dawkins is talking in circles. In the beginning, he admits that there could have been an intelligent designer because of the complexity of the chemical and biological processes that we presently see. But that intelligence would have had to have come about through a process of evolution. That doesn't even make sense. It is a clear-cut case of circular reasoning. Which came first? The complex biological processes through random incremental process from which would have eventually emerged a higher intelligence? Or the higher intelligence that would have had to have been involved in a complex biological process? It seems Dr. Dawkins has stepped on his own theory and crushed it under the hypocrisy of his own circular reasoning. In light of the fact that Dr. Dawkins is so easily duped by ignorant little creationists, and when he is duped, he says the most outlandish things, so much so that he has to explain and apologize to his adoring fans, one can only draw the logical conclusion that Mr. Dawkins is pretty easily duped. By holding to the inane pseudoscience of evolution, replete with its straw man arguments, it is also our contention that Mr. Dawkins has been duped by the very premise of which he is the high priest, and in so doing, he is duping millions upon millions of others. Here is a word of wisdom. Stick with intelligent design. In the end, you won't have been duped. <laughs>